Hi, I'm Steve Nelson, and we're going to, going to talk today about spirometry in the primary care office, or office spirometry. We'll also address some of the issues about how it differs from diagnostic spirometry normally, taken, normally done in a uh, pulmonary function lab. I'm the Associate Executive Director of the American Association for Respiratory Care, and I've been working on pulmonary diagnostics for about 25 years. What we're going to talk about today is what is spirometry, how do I know when to use it, how do I get good results, and what does it mean? Spirometry is a breathing test that measures how fast and how much air we can forcibly exhale. Spirometry provides an objective measure of how much air you can breathe out as opposed to subject subjective measure which patients describe as how they feel on a particular day. It's fast, simple, and inexpensive. Unfortunately, it is also an unnatural act. It requires good demonstration from the technician trying to get the spirometry test done, and it requires a lot of patient comprehension. Spirometry measures two useful values. These are FEV1, the forced expiratory volume in one second. This is how much air you can blow out using a forced breath in one second, and the FVC or FEV6. FVC is forced vital capacity, and FEV6 is the forced expiratory volume in six seconds. These indicate how much air you can blow out. These two measurements are all that's really required in an office setting or a primary care setting to find out if there's a presence of any kind of lung disease. Here are two different spirometers. The first one simply measures FEV1 and FEV6, but it doesn't provide a graphical output or any quality statements. The second device can measure the same values, but adds quality statements and graphical printouts that can be stored for future reference. Spirometry devices display a graph that shows two different types of information. They're, the graphs are either flow versus volume or volume versus time. Flow versus volume is displayed on this graph by the yellow line. Flow is displayed on the left. Volume runs across the bottom of the graph. Notice that you cannot tell where the FEV1 occurs on this particular graph. As a person blows out, the graph rises abruptly and then tapers off monotonically down to the forced vital capacity. The forced vital capacity is the farthest point on the right of this curve. These are examples of flow volume curves taken from different devices. You can see in the first instance the curves are placed one on top of the other so that you can see relatively quickly that all of the efforts are similar. The picture on the right shows an inspiratory effort as well as an expiratory effort. In this case the graphs are offset by one liter as, a, as each effort is produced. In many cases, indications for the expected curves are put on as dotted lines or dashed lines, and these are the values that are what is expected of the patient for their particular height, sex, age, and race. The second type of graph is a volume time graph. On this particular picture, you can see that the FEV1 is indicated by where the height of the volume occurs at one second after the start of the expiration. The FEC is measured as the highest point on the expiration. This can also be used for FEV6 where it would just stop at, the, at a duration of six seconds. The volume time tracing does not have any indication of what the flow is, so you cannot read any of the flow rates off of this tracing. Here's an actual example of a tracing, and again, you can see that this includes dotted lines to indicate where the expected values are, and it, as you can see on this one, the values are all, the curves are below the expected values. This also shows superimposed curves with the efforts on top of each other. In the next slide, you can see a demonstration of flow volume and volume time graphs that were taken simultaneously. You'll notice on the flow volume loop on the left 
that the indications for the expected values are the dots in this particular case. The uh, traces again are superimposed and in this case you can see that the efforts by this particular patient were also very similar. At the same time, the volume time tracing was obtained on the right. You can see that this, in this particular case, the patient blew out for at least six seconds, so the FEV6 and FEC are both valid numbers, but you can also see by the dots on the volume time tracing that the effort is below what was expected for this particular patient. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but this shows you that both of these indicate good efforts and show reproducible results.